Um, a little bit of context for you because uh, both at both DHBs we've experienced an increase in need for bariatric surgery, but there has been a bit of a mismatch in terms of uh, ethnic groups for who need surgery the most and then who actually ends up achieving surgery. The bariatric pathway is quite an extensive one. Um, it's pictured here, which I don't expect you to be able to read, but it just shows how many appointments and milestones people need to go through to achieve it, um, actually secure a place on the bariatric program. It's quite a competitive process where they have to demonstrate sustained weight loss to be able to um, be eligible for surgery. So because of that, there are all these health literacy, health literary health literacy, sorry, uh, hurdles along the way that people needed help and support with, and particularly those groups that tended to not be able to achieve a place on the program, um, Māori and Pacifica especially. Um, the pilot program that we looked at, Hi Awatea Ho, had a couple of um, key aims. It was to support the health literacy um, for patients in their whānau, uh, and it was very much a whānau-centric approach. So this involved health, um, uh, sorry, navigators from Te Whanau and Toitangata going into the home of Māori or Pacific patients who were on the bariatric pathway and working together with them as well as their whānau um, to uh, goal set um, discuss barriers, uh, make plans for how they were going to um, achieve bariatric surgery, down to the basic things like going to the supermarket together to try and select the right foods, which was of often a really challenging thing for people to be able to do. Um, evaluating this program had a couple of um, different primary purposes. One was to look at the health literacy and patient outcomes um, for people who were going through bariatric surgery, the experience for Fano and their health literacy of understanding what this lifestyle choice meant um, for their wider Fano, and also for the delivery of ser services. So we took a health literacy approach that was quite systemic, not a deficit model of understanding health literacy, but one where we looked at the broader system um, processes and policies in our service and how health care professionals are interacting to try and support improved health literacy. Uh, this evaluation, which was actually a number of years in the making, <laughs> uh, we had s a small pilot group, um, 32 who were supported by navigators, and we used a comparison group of 33 patients who went through the surgery without navigators um, to try and compare in terms of their patient experience of engaging with the service, but also a number of clinical indicators that were predefined um, with the measurement group for the evaluation and surgeons and clinical staff who worked within the bariatric services. Um, we ended up completing, um, over the path of the bariatric surgery, 128 qualitative interviews uh, with patients who were undergoing it, and their whānau participated in some of those as well. Um, that's the biggest qualitative data set I've ever worked with, and I have to say it was a real challenge, um, but a lot of learning in there. Uh, we also had 116 surveys completed um, overall by patients and whānau, and those were really oriented around um, health literacy support mechanisms and their experience of the bariatric pathway. Uh, in terms of findings with clinical indicators, this differed um, between counties and Waitamata a little bit, which was quite interesting. Um, there was a range of clinical indicators, most of which at counties um, suggested we might be looking at a trend towards um, improved um, surgical outcomes for Māori and Pacific. Um, there were three that actually reached statistical significance. That was their time to theatre. So from they, when they came in from their initial seminar, went through multiple steps and then actually were able to achieve surgery and um, get to theatre at the end, um, that time reduced for our intervention group, as well as readmission length of stay and readmissions um, following their last outpatient clinic. Um, we weren't necessarily expecting, <laughs> as evaluators, maybe we were more cynical to see any statistics statistically significant findings with a group this small, so this was quite interesting for us. Um, different story at Waitamata, none of their findings reached statistical significance, which is something that we're still discussing with the team there in terms of how we interpret that and what it means for both services. So quite an interesting um, difference there. Navigator support in general, um, with all the qualitative feedback we got, we were able to 
um, get some really great feedback around what the experience of having navigator support was like for the patients who received it. Um, and these were key things that they talked about in their experience. Overall, it was really, really positive, overwhelmingly positive with what people said about their experience of being supported by a navigator. Um, but accountability for behaviour change was a key thing that they talked about. So having that person to keep them on track, um, checking in, monitoring, being somebody who kept them honest was what they talked about. Um, holistic support. So from the bariatric team, the support that they provide provided with is largely medical. Um, when they went home and then had to make decisions about physical activity and diet in their day-to-day -day lives, that was a very different context for them um, and one in which they're making decisions without the support of a medical professional. The navigator was able to go beyond the medical and really start working through some of the psychological and social aspects of the pathway for them and the changes that they were having to make. Um, Manakitanga, that was particularly important important to the patients we worked with because they felt that they had somebody who really actually cared for them and that really um, had a big impact for them on their experience of the service, having somebody walk al alongside with them who genuinely seemed to care for them. Uh, and information re and resources. So the navigator was somebody that they could depend on to clarify key messages that, was ca that were coming from health professionals and particularly where they felt that might be conflicting and also provide a lot of resources in terms of being able to further um, their learning at home around what they should be doing. From the 126 interviews, um, aside from the feedback on navigator support, we also had, um, we derived two key themes that we discuss in detail in the report. One of them is that the psychological journey is a central part of, bariatric ex of the bariatric experience. That might feel like a really obvious finding, um, and in some ways it is, but my goodness, it um, speaks volumes in terms of what we need to do about changing service delivery from bariatric services. Um, the psychological journey was huge for these patients in terms of getting the right getting in the right mindset, really grappling with their new identity of going from somebody who was defined as morbidly obese to changing, um, changing their relationships with food, seeking um, support and coping with changes in their diet. Um, and that psychological support was a huge gap in the bariatric pathway. I'm gonna send these to people so that they can read these quotes. The second was that the journey was largely self and whanau directed. So they had these appointments with healthcare professionals, but for the most part, they're making decisions on a day-to-day -day ba basis without that support being available to them. So they're using people around them to really understand what to do next and make decisions about their care. There were really limited opportunities to connect and network with other people on the bariatric pathway, which only increased their feeling of isolation and having to rely just on their whanau. Um, there was also the service changes that we expected as a result of this program. A very little was able to be achieved in terms of creating supportive services and we have done a lot of debriefing with the teams around that as well. Um, key barriers were around lack of supportive systems, leadership, management and culture and health literacy not actually being well understood or valued by all staff and therefore it being under prioritised. Um, there's a lot of learning for us all, so I'm happy to distribute it if you're interested. <laughs> I can't do a three-year study in eight minutes. <laughs> It actually depended how long their surgical pathway took. So they started with them from the first information session where they recruited people. Um, so it was the first time they engaged with the hospital service, not with the GP who would have referred them. Um, and then they would be with them right up until post-surgery. So for some people that may have only had been a three month period, but other people it was taking them up to like 14 months, 15 months to go through that process. After the surgery they did, um, some earlier than others because when, of the, when the pilot stopped, but after surgery their contact would generally stop within about four weeks. <laughs> 